So the name of my talk is bringing the fun back into Java development uh, on Windows. And this is possible with the help of WSL2 and test containers, uh, I, I might say, I might argue. And um, yes, a little bit to my about myself. So my name is Kevin. Um, you can find me on Twitter at, uh, at Kivu or Kiviv to say it in the German way. And I'm currently uh, doing my PhD uh, on blockchain research at the Institute for Internet Security in, in Germany. Um, and I'm leading the blockchain research lab. Um, but I just recently jumped into blockchain before I was just classical software engineering stuff, a lot of Java stuff, a lot of Docker container stuff. And um, I'm one of the maintainers of the test containers project, uh, which is a Java project for making Docker containers more easily instrumentable and accessible um, for you, for your testing needs, most of all. And we will look into this topic um, more today. So the basic idea is that um, a developer onboarding experience um, ideally should look like this. So the new developer comes into a team and he can clone the project and he can build the project and everything works. It will build, it will run the test, it will run the integration test, etc. So this is now an example for Java. In Java, we use Gradle for building things or Maven would be the same, um, but it should ideally work the same way for most projects, for most languages, at least if we are in this application development domain. The more low level stuff is, is not my field. I don't know if you can really provide this experience there, but ideally you can. So the idea is you don't need to configure your system a, a lot, like installing local databases, Kafka, whatever to test against this stuff. It should be described as part of your whole project, as part of your code, as part of the code of your test suite. And um, basically, containers made this approach very, very feasible, I think. So lightweight containers, you could do it before with virtual machines, but containers just made it much more easy. And um, we have uh, also we have the containers available in the Java world. And um, this is um, with test containers, this works very well. And we have many Java open source projects that use test containers for this. And uh, the general idea of using test containers looks like this. So you are um, having an, uh, um, an object oriented, object -oriented uh, abstraction on top of Docker, basically. So you can instantiate objects that represent then containers and you can instrument them. You can start them, you can stop them. And some of the cool stuff is that uh, if you start the containers, this will not just mean starting a container as you would uh, do it on the command line, it would also um, wait for the application inside the container to be ready. And test containers has different kind of features that will check for the readiness of an application inside, like for example, just checking, can the TCP port, uh, is the TCP port answering? And um, this is already something that provides enormous value for testing, for making stable tests. Because if you know, like if you would just run the container from the command line, it would directly return and you basically have a race condition in your test. And um, this is how the general API looks, but there's also support for integrating it with test frameworks directly. So this is Java, JUnit 5, Jupyter test framework. So there you just say, okay, my test needs this Docker container. You annotate it with the stuff, and then it gets automatically instrumented by the test containers extension for you. So, so, that, so far is all just test container stuff. We will come to WSL in a bit. Um, a little bit about the project. So it was released 2015. Uh, we have three core maintainers that take care of me, take care of it. So Richard North was also the inventor. Uh, we have him here in the middle. Uh, on the left, we have Sergey, uh, and then me on the right. And this is the only time we three were uh, together at the same place uh, on in the world. It was last year at my wedding. And uh, it's a 100% open source library, quite active, used by a lot of open source projects. It is Java, first and foremost Java, and it is for Java projects, but we have forks, community forks in other languages that re-implement the concepts, basically. And um, yes, I will I will not dive too much into the feature set. So if you're interested in uh, test containers, just check it out. And there are other talks that um, highlight test containers in more detail. 
but basically there's also specialized support for containers that already uh, have it, have the database inside special APIs to make it more easily accessible to interact with the database or with something like Kafka and so on, or Docker Compose, Selenium browser testing, cool stuff. Um, so the interesting thing also is that test containers from the very beginning try to be platform independent and work out of the box. So the users don't have to configure test containers. Um, the idea is that test containers will check the environment for indicators that tell test containers what kind of Docker environment I'm in. So this means test containers will work from, for Docker machine, for Docker, uh, if you set the Docker host, if you have the normal Docker installation on Linux, Docker for Mac works, and Docker for Windows works, at least since some versions. And Docker for Windows will work with named pipe support. So it works on all environments. But this hasn't been this case since forever. So actually, the order of how we supported platforms were kind of like this. We were first uh, working on Linux and macOS kind of at the same time. Linux was just uh, kind of automatically supported. And Docker for Mac, it was the use case like the uh, other core developers were using Docker for Mac. So therefore Docker for Mac was supported. And then it was kind of a hard fight to get really good Docker for Windows support into um, test containers. So first we had Docker Toolbox, then later we had Docker for Windows, but it was only supported if you would expose the TCP uh, connection, which is of course insecure and not something nice and also something the user has to do for beforehand, configuring the, um, the uh, Docker for Windows installation. Then at one point we got NPipe support and then everything became better. Docker for Windows was better support. So I was, uh, or we were very interested then to see um, what will we have to do to get WSL support in there. Um, so this was the pull request. Uh, so once WSL2 was general availability, I directly tried it out and I checked, okay, will um, WSL2 work with test containers? And um, yeah, so this is the pull request to it. And let's let's check it together. And if, we, if you check at the files change, that's the coolest part. Uh, it's just the readme. So once WSL came, it was directly supported out of the box for us. And that was quite amazing for me. So we had Docker for Windows support. We didn't have real WSL support, but once WSL was released and Docker for Windows with WSL backend support was released, it worked out of the box with the full feature set. And this was a mind blowing experience for me when I tried it out. So when I say everything worked 100%, I'm like, I'm basically honest, but a tiny thing I had to change. So I run our full test suite and everything was working. Just a couple of tests were failing and I didn't understand why. And the reason there was um, it was using very old Docker images. So I already had the idea that it had something to do with very old Docker images. What could it be? And then I found another issue and had to do that uh, this uh, kernel command line flag had to be set, vsys calls. This is something that is not really WSL2 related. It is more, more Linux kernel related. So it can also happen on other Linux kernels. But yeah, that was it. That was it. That was it. And uh, if you compare this with... Um, so these are the instructions. If you are using WSL2 backend in Docker for Windows and you want to use test containers, these are the instructions you have to follow. So basically nothing. And if you have up-to-date images, then you have to do really nothing, not even this flag. And we can compare this with uh, WSL instructions, mm. which are a bit more involved. Because and may, maybe nowadays it's even it's also easier to get it working. I don't know, but back then this is how we got it working, and um, getting the name pipe in there and so on is a bit not easy. So you have to do it with a TCP port again and so on. Maybe there is a more elegant way. But at least for us, it was not obvious and you had to follow different workarounds and different hacks. And then you could get it working, but it was more complex on multiple levels. And WSL2 just worked. And this was amazing for me. And I will now just show you the demo of test containers, uh, how test containers runs in WSL2. Let me share another screen. Okay, so here 
we can see some tests. I'm not going into too much detail, but for example, something cool we can see here, I'm starting a container that is then just an Apache web server. So not a useful test, but what I want to show is that I can copy files into the container that are running on my Java class path. So this Java IDE now is running in Windows, but I'm using WSL2 with the backend. Now what I want to do, I want to mount the files from the class path into the container, but actually I don't want to mount them. I want to copy them in, in there because in general it's more stable. Then I start the container and then I interact with the container and we will just run it and not a lot will happen. Actually, we will, you will just see it works. Um, so it's starting this uh, HTTP server and then it sends an HTTP GET request and just checks that it returns FUBA. And if we check in the HTML file, I mop, map in there or copy in there, it also just says FUBA. Yeah. So, but um, the cool thing is this test as it's written here. So I'm using here some specific test containers, APIs like, uh, APIs like get container IP address, get first map port, etc. using this copy file to container approach, this will be completely platform independent. It will work everywhere. It will work on Windows. It will work on uh, Windows with WSL2, but also Windows without WSL2. It will work on, uh, on a Linux CI server. It will also make work on Docker for Mac. So we really have a super, super nice way to have platform independent integration tests running with the independent, uh, with the integration components started as Docker containers. And uh, yeah, it wasn't like this one or two years ago. So you had to have certain quirks mounting or copying the stuff into the, um, if you were on Windows. Um, and yeah, now it really, really just works. And this is uh, kind of amazing. We can, if we run again, we can maybe check what is happening in the background in the Docker. Let me start the terminal. So I just um, have, what. Well, So I'm here in the WSL2 uh, environment. And if I just do watch Docker PS, okay. Now, when I start this, we will see some, nah, terminal. We'll see, okay, some containers are starting. This is like a helper container we use, real container. And um, then, I, did I run the correct test? Yeah, then at one point they are they are gone again, they are automatically cleaned. All right, so I could get into much more detail, have much more intensive uh, uh, examples from test containers, but uh, since I don't want to run out of time and I think I'm running out of time, I'm just stopping at this point. If you wanna check out more WSL, uh, more test container stuff, do this. And um, maybe one thing I, I want to quickly share as an addition, Zack. Um, yes. So basically, now we have a nearly, nearly dream environment for Java development, also on Windows. So I was a hardcore Linux guy before, but now on, on Windows with WSL2, it works pretty well. Just there are some quirks that for Java are not perfectly solved. Other programs have, a, uh, other languages have a better um, toolset there. So it is mainly the uh, IDE support. So in Java, you really need a good IDE. Yes, there is VS Code support for Java, which is okay-ish and which has this great WSL2 integration, but the real Java IDEs like something like NetBeans, IntelliJ, Eclipse, they are still superior for bigger developments and they don't integrate that smoothly into WSL2 or don't integrate at all. So then that means you are, you are have to have the Java compilers, the JDK, everything still installed on Windows. You can start up the environment, the integration testing environment on the WSL2 with Docker works perfectly, but the tooling still on Windows. And there are some efforts that maybe will make the integration better. There's Project Projector from IntelliJ and they are also working WSL2 integration, I think. And uh, SDK Man is a tool for managing JDKs. It works perfectly on under Linux, but if you have to have the JDK under Windows, it doesn't help you if it can run in WSL2 because you need the JDK installed in uh, Windows in this case. So these are some tiny, tiny uh, paper cuts. And once they are solved, I think uh, the Windows Java development experience is as good or even better than on the other platforms. I know that some of the JetBrains IDEs have 
WSL integration, but um, I know like Klein does, but I, I guess uh, they're still working on IntelliJ. Yeah, probably C Lion has, yes, C Lion. Mm -hmm. And I know the PyCharm always was quite far always. They also had like really great Docker support where they would run the development environment in a Docker or the build in the Docker uh, image, but they never ported these features to some of the others, like Go, the Go one was always looking for this and IntelliJ also missing it, yeah. Okay. Well, it's, uh, they've been pretty receptive to feedback. So if the WSL community keeps at it, yeah, they have a they have a big issue about this with a lot of comments, and I think they are they are looking into this because uh, there is pressure from Visual Studio Code remote development environment on on this. Yeah, yeah. Um, we got to wrap up soon. Um, uh, where can they find you? Yeah, so you can find me on Twitter uh, at Keyview, basically or at Keyview. Awesome. Thank you so much. We're going to be switching really quickly to Carlos's presentation. We're trying to make up some time, do our best. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank Have fun. Bye.